Hello, everybody. My name is Kathleen Villiers Tuttle. I am a historian and a writer, and I'm delighted to be part of this conference celebrating uh, the connections made arising out of our shared interest in James Hack Chuke and his work in the West of Ireland in the 1880s. The Clifton Chuke Committee was formed in January 2014, following a meeting in Galway County Buildings arranged by Galway County Heritage Officer Marie Mannion. At the meeting, we were told by Jared Morn and Rosemary Garrity of the work being done in Mayo on the immigrants who departed from there under the Chuke Immigration Scheme. During the meeting, it was decided to set up committees in Clifton and Luke Terard to do similar work there. Carner became involved in the project a little later. Since then, each committee has worked independently, but very closely. Of the 9,500 persons who departed from Galway and Mayo under the Chuke scheme between 1882 and 1884, 3,215 were from the Clifton Union. This table shows the year, the numbers that departed and their destinations. The map is of the Clifton Union, situated on the west coast of County Galway. In the 1881 census, the Union comprises a little below 200,000 acres and has a population of 24,259. From this, it would seem that over 10% of the population of the Clifton Union took advantage of the Chuke immigration scheme and immigrated to the US or Canada at that time. The immigrants were mostly family groups with some individuals. Those who left were fleeing starvation and poverty. Three years of poor harvest brought on by extreme bad weather had left them in debt to shopkeepers and behind in their rents. And indeed, many of them had recently been evicted from their holdings for non-payment of rent. The Clifton Committee got off to a good start. The ship's manifests for the early sailings were transcribed and uploaded onto the Clifton and Connemara Heritage Society website, cliftonheritage.org. The big disadvantage, however, is that the ship's manifests do not tell us which district or townland the people came from. In September 2014, we published a booklet entitled Mr. Duke's Fund, given background on Duke and on the immigration scheme. This can be purchased at connemarigirlpublications.com. We also drew up and printed nine pull-up information panels and put these on display whenever the opportunity arose to bring the Duke story to a wider audience. Later that year, over the October bank holiday, we ran a conference with lecturers delivering papers on the topics of immigration, James Hack Chuk, and Connemara in the 1880s. It was well attended, and here we have some of the speakers and organisers. All of this was very visible and drew attention to Chuk and his work. Since then, the work undertaken has been mostly researched by me, which is slow and the results are perhaps not as obvious. At the outset, the aim of my research was to link the names on the ship's manifest with the homesteads they left behind. In other words, to identify the townlands they came from. And so I decided to take a look at what are known as the cancelled land books. These are held in the valuation office, Abbey Street in Dublin. They are a continuation of Griffith's valuation. The books are available to view in hardback at the valuations office and digitised versions for some counties can also be viewed on internal computers at that office, but they are not yet available online. The council land books show any changes that occurred in the years from the publication of Griffith's valuation in the 1850s up until the early 1990s. My plan was to focus on the 1880s and to identify names that disappear from the council land books at that time, in the hope that the same names would appear in the ship's manifest. Working with the council land books requires time and patience. The entries are handwritten and can be difficult to read. And the years that the changes take place are shown using different colored inks, which can prove difficult to decipher at times. Nonetheless, they are a wonderful source of material for people involved in genealogy or land research, as they provide a link between Griffith's valuation and the 1901 census. The same headings laid out in Griffith's valuation are used in the council land books with an additional column for observations in the council land books. This is the page for Ballycanely for both Griffith's and the council land books. As you can see, the headings for both are the same with the extra column 
for observations in the Cancer Land Books. Now, as I said, my aim was to identify names that disappear from the Cancer Land Books in the early 1880s and see if they turn up on the ship's manifest. However, given the size of the Clifton Union, it would prove too time consuming for me to cover the cancelled land books for all townlands in the Union. So instead, I decided to focus on the 24 townlands that lie between Manon Bay and Slyne Head and along the shore of Balikanili Bay. This is an area where I know from the newspaper reports that evictions had taken place in the early 1880s. Together, the, ta- the 24 townlands make up the electoral divisions of Bonown and Dunlohan. Electoral divisions were introduced under the Poor Law Act of 1838 and consist of a number of townlands grouped together for local election purposes. The ED of Bonown comprises 10 townlands and they are numbered here in brown. And the ED of Dunlohan has 14 townlands numbered in green. Together, they cover an area of a little below 11,000 acres. In the period from 1870s to the 1890s, seven landowners held these 24 townlands. And from the 1881 census figures, we know that the lands were occupied by almost 2,500 men, women and children. I photographed the pages of the cancelled land books for the 24 townlands for the period 1872 to 1891. I then extracted the information from the books for each of the townlands, laid it out on individual spreadsheets and uploaded them to our website, cliftonheritage.org, to make the information available to all. This is the spreadsheet for Balikanili. The information in column A to I is as it appears on the original page in the Council Land Books. Column J to L, headed information not on original sheet and subheaded information and comment year of changes and changes made were added to provide explanation and clarification. Each entry highlighted in blue shows the entry as it was in 1872. All following entries show any alterations made and the year these changes took place. The townland sheet for the 24 townlands can be accessed through the Clifton and Connemara Heritage Society website cliftonheritage.org. On the website, you scroll down to the Council Land Books for Erismore and Balikanili District for the period 1872 to 1891, seen here in the middle column under the heading Genealogy. By clicking on this, you will be taken to the Galway Community Heritage website. This website is an online archive for communities in County Galway and is supported by the Galway County Council Heritage Office and the National Museum of Ireland. Below the map, seen here at the bottom of the page, is the list of the 24 townlands and an explanation of the material given in the townland sheet. Click on the name of the townland you want to view and this will lead you to the townland sheet, similar to what I just showed for Balikneely. You can download the townland sheet if needed. During the course of my research on a close examination of the 1891 census, I spotted a note stating that the drop in population from far six of my 24 townlands was attributed to immigration. The six townlands are listed here, along with the statistics from the census. As you can see, there is a sizable drop in each townland. This is where the townlands are located and although close in proximity, they did not have the same landlord. Now it seems safe to assume that the people that left these townlands in the 1880s were to be found among the Tuke immigrants. However, when I tried tracking names, it is difficult to be sure. Many surnames are common throughout Connemara. But two names did catch my attention. One tenant in Emlachairn, Mark Gould, Number six is crossed off in 1883. A Mark Gould shows up on the passenger list for the SS Lake Nepigon, passenger number 7687. Departed Galway the 6th of May, 1882 for Quebec. Mark, age 50, was accompanied by his wife, Mary, age 40, and five children. Another tenant in Emlecarn, number seven, Stephen Grealish, is crossed off at the same time. Now, Stephen Grealish does not appear on the ship's manifest, but there is a Martin Grealish and a Bridget Grealish 
on the SS Austrian departing Galway for Boston on the 10th of May 1882. Martin, aged 21, and Bridget, a housewife, aged 20. Perhaps part of the same family, perhaps not. During the course of this work, it became obvious to me that it would be almost impossible from our side to match immigrants with townlands, simply by using the manifest and the council land books. Having an unusual name can help, such as Gould or Grealish, but all too often the names on the manifest are common to all parts of Connemara. However, for those searching from the other direction, a descendant of someone listed on the ship's manifest, the information provided in the townland sheet just might help to lead them to their family roots in Connemara. Some descendants of the Duke emigrants from the Clifton Union have made contact with us over the years. And one family that visited Clifton in 2017 was able to identify the exact location of the house their family left using the council land books. The house, however, had been demolished. It is hoped that the Valuations Office will eventually make the digitised versions of the council land books available online for all counties in Ireland. This will, of course, make my work on Bonown and Dunlachan obsolete. But in the meantime, I can only hope that some people find it useful and helpful. For those involved in family research and fortunate enough to know which townland in Connemara their family came from, other online sources available on North Connemara townlands can be found again through the Clifton and Connemara Heritage Society webpage. Returning to cliftonheritage.org, in the bottom left-hand corner is a tab, Local Townlands Online Resources. Clicking on this will take you to the Connemara Roots Northwest Connemara Heritage page on the Galway Community Heritage website. This information was compiled by Roger Harrison and funded by Forum Connemara and will provide you with access to online sources for each North Connemara townland. These are the web addresses for the website I mentioned, the Valuations Office Dublin, Clifton and Connemara Heritage Society and the Galway Community Heritage Society. And I can be contacted at my website, connemaragirlpublications.com. Thank you.